Uh, Eric, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Um, so this morning was the first time you've seen footage from a film after months and months of working on it. Um, what, what feelings do you have when you finally see all this stuff on the big screen? It's exhilarating. I mean, it, it certainly can be. Um, I mean, obviously, we're, we're seeing the shots, you know, on a daily basis over and over and over and over again, but you don't really see them in a kind of that cinematic context of being able to see them with, you know, the, the final grade, the color grading, and then the, the final sound mix, and actually see them as a sequence, you know. Um, it was exhilarating, absolutely exhilarating. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. So visual effects work usually begins in post-production, but with this film, you were there, um, boots on ground, on location from the beginning. What was that experience? I think it was crucial. Um, you know, the I mean, this kind of work typically it's it's something where you know maybe you've got some representation when the film's being shot, and you're making sure that you've got um, you know the the plates that are being captured to put the visual effects into are being done in a way that facilitates it as efficiently as possible. But um, we really needed to work with uh, considering that you know half the characters and the, the main characters in this film are, are digital characters um, it was very crucial to be involved from the earliest stage of, of concept art of of um, you know being there in in New Orleans let's say uh, at the very beginning of, of prep so that we could be working with Matt the director and James Chinlin the production designer making sure that you know the the way that Matt wants to shoot it the way that James is planning on building the sets, all that stuff is going to work, you know, both for, you know, performance capture needs, for set extension needs, all that kind of stuff. And it's just, you know, we're just working like a unit um, to, to produce, you know, kind of the, the, the work in the most efficient way possible with the kind of the, 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 the you know, making, um, making the best pictures possible. Yeah. Yeah. Working with Matt Reeves is the first time you've worked with him. What was that experience like? It's fantastic. Um, Matt is this. This was. I mean, Matt's obviously done. done uh, you know, some some visual effects work before. You know, uh, Cloverfield and, and everything. Um, but he's never done a heavily digital character performance like this before. And I think there was a lot of uh, trust required. I think of of him going into this process effectively, almost blind. You know, like not really having uh, you know much of a much of a feel for how the thing goes and. You know, can he really expect that that what he's seeing there is going to translate to the apes? And I think you know, by the you know, early on in the process, he was really starting to see that wow, this actually is going to work. Um, really encouraging to work with. You know, it's just the the thing that was really great. Um, is his 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 filmmaking style isn't so much that everything is sort of laboriously storyboarded going in. It's a lot of sort of you know walking around the space with a viewfinder and kind of finding the shots and sort of responding to what what he's seeing there and and being open to you know shots changing or entire like the flow of a sequence changing and that kind of thing. You know, once we actually start seeing how it's all playing with the actors, um, and in that sense, it was. Um, you know, on, on one hand, that that kind of thing can be really uh, problematic if if you're not able to sort of move with the changes. But I think a lot of the technology that we sort of brought to this one, you know, improvements to the technology, both in the in the sense of like the the markers that we had on the actors were much more robust this time around and could stand up to sort of rolling around on the ground and that kind of thing. Um, and then also just the camera systems, you know, like our our. Um, you know, our, our sort of our mothership, you know, our, our production hub was able to be moved relatively easily to all these remote locations and stuff. And so, you know, it wasn't that big of a thing if, if, the, sh if the whole sequence changed a little bit. You know, we could, we could easily readjust things really quickly and not sort of hold up production. So, Speaking of that technology, when you look back at the, the timeline of our motion um, uh, performance, when you look from Gollum all the way to Caesar, now what's the biggest technological advancement that you noticed through the whole thing? I mean, obviously, the, the you know the, the higher fidelity data that we can get, just purely technically speaking, like the more the the, the sort of the, the better resolution we can get from the face cameras to sort of read those performances better. The the biggest jump was you know switching from a passive motion capture marker system like we're using on on uh, Lord of the Rings and King Kong um, and Avatar for that matter to an active marker system where instead of you know suddenly now the actors can walk around emitting the light that the mocap cameras can see um, and once that happened that was the biggest jump because suddenly now we could take the mocap volume and put it out in the forest we could put it out on the bridge we could move it into the factory we could do all this you know all this kind of stuff that was wasn't even imaginable previously and actually have apes you know, or or any other character for that matter, like interacting with 
the other actors on on stage, you know, actually have them play off of each other. That was the biggest boon from this whole notion of performance capture is that you can actually have actors, you know, this guy's in a gray suit, but he can still, you know, like they can still make eye contact with each other. They can still play off of each other. They can still kind of feed into each other's performances. And that's the biggest step, I think, that, that you know, going all the way back to Gollum days, um, you know, that was, Gollum was, was very much a, uh, you know, Andy would do his thing, and then Andy would step out, and then Sam and Elijah um, would would or, or <laughs> Sam and Frodo would um, would do their part, you know, uh, acting against nothing. And a lot of times, you know, like the performance suffers. I think from the human performance suffers from that um, because obviously we have we have the time on the back end potentially, you know, to sort of finesse the actual performance of the digital character. But what you've shot on the set is what you've got, and so that performance itself is really crucial to um, to to um, to kind of get right on the day. The previous film feels such a groundswell of um, support for Andy to try to get some type of um, awards consideration. Mm -hmm. Do you think in our lifetime you were, we will actually see Oscar nominations announced and a motion capture performance be a part of one of those nominations? I would love to get to the point where we don't look at it as a motion capture performance. We just look at it as a performance. You know? like it's, um, I, don't, I don't see why there's such a difference. I mean, I think, obviously, from an audience perspective, they're seeing somebody that, that's not Andy, that's, a, that's an ape. You know? um, and if we've done our job right, they think it's a real ape, you know. But the um, the important thing to remember, though, is that that performance is authored by Andy Serkis for Caesar. You know, Toby is the author of that performance of Koba. Like they are, they kind of they own that performance. Like they are the ones that um, were working with Matt on set. You know, having that dialogue about what that performance, what what is the emotion of this of this moment? How should I play this? You know, and and then what the, those individual actors sort of bring of themselves into that role. Um, our job as the visual effects side of things is to make sure that that performance is translated as faithfully, faithfully as possible onto the screen. Um, you know, and of course we're doing all, talking about all this technology and stuff, but that's not really what this is about. I mean, like you know, ultimately this is an art form. You know, it, it's we're, we're combining effectively two art forms together to to produce this performance. And it's you know, in that sense, you could say, yeah, but it's it's a hybrid performance. How could you give it to one actor? Well, I mean, it it is ultimately. Andy's performance. You know. Last question: Influences. What were the films that really inspired you to dedicate yourself to this craft that you're working in right now? Um, I have Jim Cameron to blame for that. I think. Um, yeah, it was like it was the the sort of late '80s, early '90s, The Abyss, T2, um, Jurassic Park. You know, all the stuff that was coming out at that time from Industrial Light and Magic um, was just blowing my mind. And that was that was the big switch that went. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Well, look, the footage looks great. I can't wait to see the film. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.